<laughs> we'll just hide him. Okay, what's good everybody? In this video, we explore classical Indian dance. I love to dance and I'm a tango instructor. I danced tango for almost 10 years and I teach tango. Classical Indian dance is an ultimate form of expression. They use their eyebrows and their faces and they tell stories with their fingers and their hands and the way that they use their feet is unlike anything I've ever seen. Very special. We go on a hike around a mountain and to the famous river and waterfall that runs through Bagsu. A local told me that this water is holy. It comes from the Himalayas and it filters through a temple that's at the bottom of Bagsu. And many people love to just bathe in this water that's near the temple because it does give you a good feeling. Maybe it's the negative ions. I'm not sure what it is, but the water there is really nice and it's unlike any other kind of water that I've been to just so clear and pure because it comes from the top of the Himalayan mountains. I lived there for two months. One month was to do a yoga and meditation teacher training and the second month was because I just really liked Bagsu. I liked the peaceful feeling and it was very cool there compared to the rest of India. I learned of a different way to get to the waterfall than most people know and it's kind of a secret way. Thanks for subscribing. You can go the secret way to the waterfall. I will show you how to do that in this video. I made several dear friends there that I'm not sure when I'll see again, but I hope to see them soon because <laughs> I would love to go back there. Stay tuned for some excellent copyright free music and some beautiful sights. Before we begin, I would like to ask you if you could please hit the subscribe button and then say sorry for hitting it and gently pat it on the head because I am trying to get to 1000 subscribers and you have the power to help me to reach this goal so I can follow my dreams and keep teaching yoga and tango and make YouTube videos. Thank you for your help. Let's, Let's get it. Start it. Hello. It is probably our second or third final day here. Today we are going to try this Indian dance class and I'm wearing my Indian dress. Okay. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Now for a short history lesson on Odissi Indian classical dance. Odissi is one of the eight classical dance forms of India. The dance is offered to Lord Jagannath, the principal deity of Orissa and a form of Vishnu. Danced originally by Maharis. Maharis are women who devoted their lives to dancing for God. Indian culture recognizes dance as one of the highest offerings that can be given to God, uniting the mind, body, and spirit. Devotional dancing is a connection to the divine presence that is all around us. At the beginning of the dance class, we offered the dance to Lord Jagannath by waving incense around a small statue. This was all new to me as I knew very little about this kind of dance. Then we started the class with different warm-up exercises to increase the strength in our legs, arms, abs, and feet. When we were warmed up, we began doing the exercises. I worked up a sweat in the class. We started out easy. And then as we moved on in difficulty, a number of steps, only the more experienced students could carry on with the intricacy of the steps. We all tried our best. It is just a matter of training your brain to move your body. Dancing is so good for your body, mind, and soul. Overall, the class was so much fun and something entirely new. If you can take the class, I highly recommend it. Classes are offered in the morning and evening. The instructor also travels internationally to teach classes, so if you're interested in learning, the instructor in Bagsu is amazing. She teaches so you can invite her to teach in your own studio. I went to the Indian dance class. I found out it's a traditional Indian dance. Very beautiful. And they do some really interesting things, slapping the feet on the ground. like a clap but you slap it on the ground it makes the same clapping noise
I never saw a traditional Indian dance before and I asked her if I can film but there was some other beginners in the class and just wanted to be respectful of all the other people so I didn't film anything I did get her information I'm gonna put it here here <laughs> you can just Google traditional Indian dance and it comes up <laughs> it's so misty because it's about to rain and I have to find cover traditional Indian dance put it in YouTube right now and it's very interesting it's kinds of dances that tell a story the way that you learn it is first by the feet and then you start to move the upper body and she explained that you learn first 10 sets of steps and then another 10 sets of steps so you, use, you learn different patterns with your feet and then from there you grow once you learn the 10 and the 10 then you can start to learn choreography I wish I would have found the place sooner because I would have really liked to learn how to move that way because it's totally different from any of the dances I've seen ever her contact info is here and you can find her dances on YouTube and you can see everything she does and then that way since I can't go you guys can go <laughs> right now I will show you guys the famously beautiful waterfall and river that is in Bagsu the water has a particular kind of energy to it that makes you feel totally rejuvenated going there the water is a snow melt from the Himalayas. It is a place to hang out, do a trash cleanup, and soak in the negative ions. During the summer, the water was cold but refreshing. The monks from the Dalai Lama temple and nearby monasteries go to the river to wash the maroon robes and allow them to dry out on rocks in the sun. Let's go to the waterfall. This is my favorite way to go. Start from the top of the main road in Bagsu. This hike will take you about 20 minutes to walk to the waterfall. If you visit Bagsu, you can enjoy this hike as it is lesser known and the path is along the mountain. Most of the tourists take a different way and it can get overcrowded. This way there are no crowds. say that this is the secret way to the waterfall because you don't have to go up an enormous amount of stairs there's so many tours and so many stairs and you have to use the stairs all the way up it's better to go this way I also prefer this way because I think it's faster and it's way more peaceful and there's no one so this looks like a very nice yoga studio Chinmay yoga it's in the mountains it's so peaceful here nice and quiet check it out <laughs> you can also rent a room here and stay here for a while aside from eating the delicious food going to the waterfall is my favorite thing about Bagsu once you get closer to the water you are likely to encounter some cheeky goats the goats belong to local farmers and eat the leaves from bushes around the water hello ah it's a baby goat They are peaceful creatures and on more than one occasion, we had fun helping them to reach the leaves that they could not reach. Mm, thank you very much. At this point in the hike, the views are incredible and you really feel like you are at an entry point to the Himalayas. You can look out over the city of Dharamshala and breathe in the fresh air. It's so pretty, you can see Dharamshala down below and all the rest of India and you can see the direction the river goes. During monsoon season in July and August, the locals recommend that we do not walk along the mountain when it rains because there could be a landslide or flash flood that overwhelms the path. It rained every day towards the end of July, usually there was a small part of the day with no rain. We took advantage of the small window to dry the laundry in the sun. During monsoon season, it seemed that everything gets very humid and does not dry for weeks on end, including the mountain.
One day I was hanging by the water and I saw four men that looked all sweaty and dehydrated come down to the water and drink it like they had had water in many hours. And one of them had a bloody nose. They had gone hiking and went off trail and they said they had gotten lost for about 14 hours that day behind this mountain. Once you go beyond these paths, there is not much that separates you from the wilderness of the Himalayas. If you do go hiking, be sure to stay on the path and do not take any shortcuts. We are fortunate that we get to experience nature this close. This way, there's no people! There is no need to bring a picnic because there are these little shacks that make masala chai and offer some sweets, fruits, and potato chips. There is a fork in the path. Most days, I would go here to the right. It takes you to some beautiful pools and the waterfall is below. But on this particular day, I decided to go to the left for the first time and explore the pools above the waterfall. So the air up here is so nice, it's just so beautiful. Can you see the color of the water? The air here feels so clean. Now we're coming across to the Shiva Cafe. some beautiful flowers. No smell. <laughs> wow. This place is incredible. The water is so clear, but there are irresponsible people who throw their trash and leave it in this amazing oasis. See that plastic bottle? They don't think about how their action will affect others. If you come here, pick up as much trash as you can and keep it in a bag or backpack each time you visit. With some mindfulness, we can keep this place clean or it will become a trash river. The sun is setting now. I feel sad that I have to leave this beautiful place. <laughs> Get some deep breaths here because the air is very fresh. Just want to show you guys the incredible beauty again because I'm so sad that we have to go. Also, whoever made this path, kudos to the person who made this beautiful path. I mean, that must have taken a lot of work. Some good karma for them. I hope that you guys can come visit this place because it's really beautiful. Like I'm <laughs> hiking while vlogging. The sun is setting now and I'm just going to have some tea with some friends. Go back to Dharmsala, where I'm staying now. I'm studying Ayurveda with a doctor there. 
and learning so many things but Dharamsala is so hot compared to Baksu so I really miss it <laughs> nice moment that's a good place to practice playing a flute <laughs> there will be no light going back to Dharamsala we at night time maybe it's not the best to take the bus because there are many changes and today the bus broke down on us so if it breaks down and we're in the middle of the mountain it might not be so easy to find someone later at night but we're going to take a taxi back from Bagsu or McLeod to Dharamshala it should be around 450 or 400 maybe 500 <laughs> after we take the taxi we'll just probably be 9 o'clock at night we'll probably get back and then I'll sleep and then tomorrow I wake up at very early do some yoga and then start the class at 7 30 so we've been starting our Ayurveda classes at 7 30 bright and early right now I'm just gonna try to enjoy this beautiful place I love it I love being in nature breathing the air and listening to all the insects I hope that you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be showing more of my adventures and I hope to make better and better videos come along with me <laughs> some things that I want to focus on in the future is teaching more teaching things that I've learned studying and doing some more yoga yeah, I really appreciate it yeah, I hope to take you along with me on this journey or take myself along and you can observe <laughs> okay see you next time <laughs>